Hi everyone, this is Michael with Trade Edge Coding, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the Supply and Demand Zones Indicator for Thinkorswim. This indicator automatically detects supply and demand zones, as well as support and resistance zones, and plots them on the chart. These zones are levels where more buyers or sellers are likely to enter the market, and so you can use these to spot areas where price is likely to reverse. So as you can see here, price is coming down and then it hits this demand zone where the buyers come in and then push the price up to the supply zone where the sellers come in and then push the price back down. And so that's the theory behind the supply and demand zones. When you first import this indicator into Thinkorswim, it will load a shared chart that looks like this. And if we look at the studies here, you'll see there are four shared studies. So two of these studies, the ones that say scan at the end, can actually be removed from the chart. They don't have any output. And so what's left over is one indicator for supply and demand zones and another indicator for support and resistance zones. So if we take these one at a time, I'll turn this one off. So now we're just looking at support and resistance zones. These are formed when there's a large reversal like this. So I'll go into the settings here, and we'll take a look at how it's calculated. We'll start off with the left length and the right length. These are basically the number of bars to the left and to the right of a reversal. So higher numbers here will show fewer zones, and lower numbers will show more zones. And you can click on the question mark symbols here for explanations of all of these inputs. Next we have the filter. So obviously a lower filter setting will show more zones and then a higher setting will remove some of the zones. So theoretically the zones that were removed were weaker zones. Next you can choose how narrow or wide the zones are. So if I change this to wide, you'll see all the zones got a little bit wider. I'll come back to these next two inputs a little bit later and we'll skip down to show zones. So if I turn this off, you'll see that the shading goes away and now we just see the lines at the top and bottom of the zones. Or you can do the opposite and you can turn the shading on and turn the lines off. So now you only see the shading like this. Next is alerts. You can turn alerts on and off right here. And there are two alerts. One tells you when price is entering a supply zone, and the other tells you when price is entering a demand zone. And so these are just audio alerts. They'll play a ding sound, and they'll give you a message in the message center. And then down here in the global section, you can change the colors of the zones. So you could change the colors of the lines and the zones separately. So for example, I could change all the support and resistance zones to all be one color, like this. So that's the support and resistance zones. I'll come back here and turn this study on and turn this one off. So now we're looking at the other indicator, which is for traditional supply and demand zones. So these are formed when price is trading within a range and then breaks out of the range, like on this candle. So if we go back into the settings again, these first two inputs are a similar concept. Lower numbers show more zones, higher numbers show fewer zones. Next is the bars to break input. So this controls when the zones are hidden after price breaks through a zone. So you can see here, as soon as this candle closes on the other side of the zone, the zone is hidden. But if we increase this number here, you'll see that the demand zone here will be extended a few bars to the right, like this. You can also turn off the hiding altogether by turning off hide broken zones, like this. So as you can see here, all the zones are extended to the right. But that does clutter up the chart a bit. So another thing you can change is the zones input at the bottom. This is basically the maximum number of supply zones and the maximum number of demand zones shown at the same time. So if we change this to one, you'll see now there's only one supply zone and one demand zone at the same time. So as soon as there's a new supply zone here, 
the previous owners here. So if we change this to two, you'll see now there's two supply zones and the third most recent zone is hidden. So you can show a maximum of nine supply zones and nine demand zones at the same time. So that's the basics of how to use this on a chart. There's also a scanner that's included and the scanner looks like this. You might need to click and drag here to expand this section so you can see all the conditions. There should be four conditions, one for supply and demand zone supply, supply and demand zones demand, support and resistance zone supply, and support and resistance zones demand. So basically each of these conditions will tell you when price is inside one of these zones. So for example, if I wasn't interested in support and resistance zones, I could turn off these two conditions, and now the scan will only give me results for supply and demand zones. Over here, you can change the time frame of the scan. Up here, you can change the watch list that it searches in. So you could do all symbols, all stocks. You could do the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, Russell 2000, or you could even do custom watch list, pretty much anything you want. If you click the pencil symbol here, it will bring up this window where you can edit the conditions. And then if you click edit again, you can change the inputs here the same way as you can with the indicators on the chart. You can also add more conditions by clicking add condition group button. So I can add a stock filter, for example, and say that I only want to look at stocks that are at least $10 like this. And then once you have all the settings you want for the scan, you can save it up here. And once you have it saved, a pretty cool feature is you can open up a watch list and load the scanner into the watch list like this. And so once this loads, this will show us all the scan results in real time and we won't have to keep refreshing it to see the new results. It will update automatically. And we can also link this with the color. So I'll link this red, and then I'll go back to the chart, and I'll link the chart red too. And so now this is a good way to click through all the scan results really quickly to see which stocks are inside one of the zones. So you can see here, this first one is inside a demand zone. If I click on the next one, you'll see this one's inside a supply zone here. The next one is also in a supply zone. And this one's in a demand zone right here. And so that's the basics of the supply and demand zones for Thinkorswim. This is also available for TradeStation, and it's available at tradeedgecoding.com. If you have any questions about this, please let us know, and thanks for watching.